Um, I would like to introduce our first speaker for the evening. Um, regular uh, attendees of the fair, and I probably have seen him, uh, are very familiar with him, and regular attendees of the Penguin. Um, so, our first speaker is uh, Dr. Norio Mishima with his presentation titled Solution Focused Grief Therapy Unique Psychotherapy That Could Be Used Just After. You learned it. All right. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to exp you know, let me introduce myself because probably there are not so many people who knew what I have done so far. But so I graduated from Kyoto University and joined the Department of Psychosomatic Medicine, Japanese with. Shin Ryo Naika in Kyushu University. And I've learned a lot about internal medicine and psychotherapy. And the psychotherapy, I learned, well, probably you don't know it, this, but it's OK. You don't know this. Autogenic training, behavioral therapy, and transactional analysis. Well, I also interested in the active listening by Carl Rogers. And well, I study a lot about the autonomic nervous function and relaxation. But I, in the mid-1990s, I well, moved to the Sangyo Idai, Sangyo meaning the University of Occupational and Environmental Health in Orio. You may know that. And where I encountered, not in the university, but in the activities, during the activities, I encountered the Solution Focused Brief Therapy, or SFBT. And since then, I, the SFBT has been my main psychotherapeutic method. But probably you may wonder what psychotherapy is. And well, this is not the strict the definition. It's in a broad sense, common knowledge about psychotherapy. It's, well, usually someone, well, in the United States talk about talk therapy. And in Japanese, there are two words for this. Shinri ryōhō or seishin ryōhō. Shinri ryōhō is used by psychologists, and the seishin ryōhō is used by psychiatrists. But it's meaning the same thing. And based on the dialogue or conversation between a therapist and a client, or sometimes plural, therapists and clients, or for example, group therapy, uh, plural. And well, who are involved is uh, tricky because well, as therapists, there are many ways of calling them. Psychologists, counselors, doctors, caseworkers, coaches, listeners. Well, many, many ways. And as clients, well, possible clients, patients, coaches, speakers, supervisors, or many. But doing the same thing in the session. And the topic of the therapy is usually psychological or mental problems, family issues, stress at work, social problems, personal consultation, and many, many, many. But generally speaking, therapists know specific theories. And based on well, the theory, therapy is done. So first of all, the therapy is important, usually, usually. And therapists are supposed to actively listen to clients and help them solve their problems based on the model or theories of the therapist. So if therapists are different, Based on the different theories, the activity might be quite different. And, well, a little bit different from the main topic. There's a lot of myth about psychotherapy. And actually, when I was learning, well, as a beginner of the well, psycho, uh, somatic doctors, I heard a lot about the myth. And one of the in, uh, interesting myths is there are so many different types methods of psychotherapy. So you can well, start counting from A to Z or something. But at that time, there was no Wikipedia or ChatGPT. So it's very difficult for me to check that, how many is. And uh, this time, I asked the Wikipedia and the ChatGPT how many therapists there are, and uh, th therapies, uh, therapy methods. And I, I, next few slides, I will show the answer. But can you guess how many? Give me some number. 
Hmm? What? 50. 50? 20? 20? Wow, you were amazed. But before that, there are <laughs> a lot of other, 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 other things uh, you said. So practice what you preach and usually then you can change the other person. You, all you can change is yourself. But this kind of thing is, well, believe that it's easier said than done. And this is the list of the Wikipedia. And probably it's not the complete list, but at least. Uh, well, 219. But the way you count the psychotherapy method, there should be much more, I think. And uh, well, 194, the solution focus brief review is there. And chat GPT answer is numerous, numerous psychotherapy. And the psychotherapy emerging one after another. So you cannot count. But uh, well, this most well-known and widely practiced psychotherapy methods are like this. 15, and the cognitive behavior therapy or CBT, and the psychodynamic therapy, it's quite similar about psychoanalysis. And 14th, solution focused brief therapy. So at least there are some people who practice this method. And usually we have to learn this, these methods. We at first learn theory, a big theory that explains not only problems, but the life, people's life, way of thinking, or something like that. Then, based on that, we learn the techniques and skills and the training. But these are things that are strictly direct to the, the direction is problem. What is problem? What causes problem? Come to think. And then start applying. But what I'm going to say, you know, explain tonight is quite different. And so why do I want to make this presentation? So I instantly get hooked when I know the encounter this approach. And, and I also use this approach not only in my practice, but also in my daily life. And I think it, it can help many people to deal with their own problems. And SFBT is say much safer to learn and use uh, than uh, the, the safer to learn and use the other therapies because we don't analyze clients, we don't analyze patients. Analyzing patients is problematic. For one of the problems, for for example, it, <laughs> it's a sad story, but transaction analysis, it's a conversational version of psychotherapy. And many people, non-experts can learn transactional analysis. But once they learn the transactional analysis, they want to analyze other people. <laughs> That's a big problem. <laughs> so that, has, that doesn't happen here. And I think this BT is the most consistent th therapy. What I mean by consistent is, uh, a little, it will take a little time, so I don't explain here. But if you are interested in that, please ask us later. And I could show my patient's case or some other cases, but it's, uh, you know, a confidential problem, privacy problem. So it's difficult to say, talk about that. So I, my own example show as an example. The, this ha quite happened always, I think. My wife seemed to be very angry about my, what I'm doing, but I don't know why. And before I know the SBT, I try to find out why. Why are so you angry? And repeatedly. And asking a why question repeatedly, it sounds like criticizing them. And it, it didn't go well. <laughs> but after I learned the SBT, I try to remember what she was like when she was not angry. She's not always angry. Sometimes angry, sometimes not. So not angry, and I try to remember what I did to her when she was not angry. And I try to do more of those behaviors. 
And the first one is what we call medical model, sometimes problem solving. And the second model is solution focused model. Then I would like to ask you a question. It's not the what is right, or right and wrong problem, it's impression. So first impression, which description do you choose? The black, get, black part gets smaller or the white part gets larger? Can you raise action white first? The second? Oh, I, I see. Suppose that is a pro you have a problem. So chronic problem, that is the treat. But it doesn't give, <laughs> or kill it instantly. You have to suffer a certain period of time. Then which change do you want? Minimizing your disease or maximizing your health? Which can I, can you raise, what, one? Both. Both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, the di this difference makes the process of the psychotherapy different. So, for example, with medical model, usually focus on problems, and like a cancer, it's a remove or reduce problems. And to do that, you have to analyze the problem. That needs a theory or model. So therapists are knowledge of, uh, have a knowledge about theory. So therapists are the expert, and they set the goal. And the treatment is therapist driven. But solution-focused model, the focus on solution from the beginning. So build solutions, and to find the pieces of solutions the well, client or patient has or have, or, the, the, or that already exists. So clients are the expert who can change their own lives. And goals are decided by clients. And therapy is client driven. This is much different. And what? I would like to show how a therapy session goes. And it's, you can't say always oh, the therapy session goes like this, but well, probably it's a, a certain common pathway to go to the, and usually at first, the client or patient came to us and start talking about the problems, problems and problems, problems. And keep listening to problems doesn't make any changes. And usually if the, you are the, based on the medical model, try to find out what the reason of the problem, what cause of the problem. But we don't go that direction. But we go to the different direction. We ask exception finding questions. So even though problems or for clients, problems are always happening, but sometimes the problems didn't happen or even happen but mildly. So we ask those times. So were there times when you felt less worried? Oh, for example, the anxiety disorder patient, were there times you felt less worried or you don't feel so anxious? This cannot be found, the, the, the exception cannot be found unless you ask that question. Usually they don't, people don't focus on exceptions. And if you can find the exception, this exception, always they have a thought that there's always a problem, problem only, but sometimes they are not. So this gives a glimmer of hope. And then we ask the client goals. This is a very difficult but very important part. So for example, what would you be different, would it be different when your problems are gone? There are many ways of asking these questions. So a few examples. What would you be doing when your problems are gone? Or what do you want instead of problems if you don't have any problem, worries? Or These are one of the well, questions we use, but this means so we don't ask the details of the problem. We jump over to the future, and from the future position, ask what it would be like, the future, your future, preferred future be like. And ask them to describe in detail what you're doing, what other people know, what behavior you are doing well. Or many things can be done. So it is very difficult to have a detailed information about what clients were thinking in the future. 
But sometimes the opponent cannot answer this question. Well, this is ex we'll explain later. And also, this is the important part. It's a scale, we call it scaling question. So on a scale of one, 0 to 10, or sometimes we use it 1 to 10, with zero, uh, this time, this was, this 0 meaning the time you were the worst, and 10 meaning you were the best. What uh, you are at right now. Well, you, we use a scaling question by 0 or 1 is the worst, or sometimes. So you just thought I should go to the hospital or something. And 10 means you, don't, you feel that I don't need a hospital anymore. I don't have to go there anymore, a kind of thing. So always the 0 is the worst, and the 10 is the good. And when a client say, I'm at a 3, then we ask, So what are the difference so that you can say you are at a three, not well, instead of one or two? So usually we ask difference from the worst part to the current. But why we don't say anything about this? Most patients, most clients say, I'm not 10 because of this or that. So start problem talking. So we have to be very careful about from a difference must be from zero. zero. And then, so in, in this stage, step, you have to be very careful about listening to that. And also, let them talk about a lot. Even though they had, at first, they don't know. They don't know. I, I don't know what I they did good or well. But keep asking, persistently keep asking. Then gradually they start talking. Then after that, so what do you find if you move up at the well, this time four, but the problem might be very difficult to say, we will say, move up to 3.5, or sometimes four, or that. Then, probably, if we go well this, at this level, then clients say something very specific and concrete. That might be a next small step. So, we, well, at the end of the session, well, they, we summarize what Kevin said and compliment on the, his hard work. Hard, hard work. We'll try we ask a very difficult question. These are very difficult questions. And finally, we give some suggestions. And why this well, therapy was born is important. The, this therapy was developed in collaboration with the therapist and the client. But before that, founders were SFBT. But Steve DeSager, man, well, these guys are so important for us. And, but the Steve DeSager was used to be a saxophonist, a jazz musician, and then moved to the social world, Twinkle. And Insta Kimberg was a Korean, born in Korea, and moved to the United States. And at first, the, in Korea, the, she major the pharmacy, but after coming to the United States, they in social work. And both met at the Mental Health Research Institute at Palo Alto, and they created a brief family center, uh, family therapy center in well, the Wisconsin. And this was a kind of the make of us. And for us, <coughs> they were the giants, just like Sigmund Freud in psychoanalysis and LOT Bank, like cognitive behavioral therapy. And another question to you. So, is Kimba will have a session with a very difficult client, a woman who has a lot of problems, complex complaint, and she tried to figure out what she wants. So, she might have asked that kind of question. What needs what do you think you need to see happen so that you can say, I don't have to come here anymore, any longer? What kind of thing needs to happen? And at f she, they tried very well, they worked very hard, but they couldn't find an answer to this. And can you guess what Berg did? Do you think Berg said that you are a difficult person or something? <laughs> no, she, she was so creative. And that is, Berg picked up the words 
that kind of use, then ask, suppose this miracle happens, but it happens while you are sleeping, so you can know it happened. How will you describe it, it happened and after you have wake up uh, deep? And we, after that, we will start talking about a lot of behaviors that are the sign of the Shinism remote therapy. So this is the beginning of miracle question. This is very fun. Miracle question, I can explain in detail, but it's not time. <laughs> so again, another example is because, well, at first I make up an academic presentation like things in here. And after I get to receive, the, Raymond gave me an instruction. And the instruction is completely different. So, oh, what should I do? And I thought, usually, the many people, what's wrong with the presentation and try to analyze that? But I didn't take that. So I chose a different one. I tried to imagine what reaction I would get if I could change my draft successfully. I imagine that uh, the audience would be showing some interesting fun. So let them be question and answer. And my suggestion to you all is coaching yourself. You don't, well, you don't use that to treat another person. Just coaching yourself, improve yourself. If you have a problem with the problem solving skills and want to try something new, why not try some self coaching with SBD? So clarify what your problems are, try to find out exceptions, and the imagine what would be different if the problems were gone, and ask yourself the scaling question like things. So these things will give you the next small step. This, is, this works very much, because I use myself this process to supervise myself, self-supervision of the, this approach. So time's up, <laughs> and thank you for your attention. And I would like to answer your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Yeah, we have wow, that was very good on time, too. Uh, so, yeah, uh, floor is open for questions, so go on ahead, please. Thank you, to, thank you for the very interesting talk. Um, I suppose maybe some clients might say um, it's like, because you, you focus very much on like internal focus, uh, internal focus on solution. But if there's like a, if the client perceives an external like, forcing, so maybe they feel they want to do something, but they're unable to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's not what happens because. Problems give us a difficult time, and you always try to do something to the problem. And they don't well, focus on the positive part of your life. They always worry about something. And if you have something good in your life, they are doing something themselves. They want to do what they want to do, not focusing and remembering the good thing. So in that case, I ask them to remember small thing, even a small thing, but that is good, and so you want them keep going, and ask them to observe that. And the next time I will ask that. Right. If you don't, don't. So even in the context, yeah. of, if they feel there, there's yeah. external, they're they can see within that. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, yeah, external, internal, we don't use that kind of thing. So everything, the client's behavior, clients, well, including thinking, how they think, and how they start, try to study. So there are many people who want to know which psychotherapy is the best. But usually someone who does some kind of therapy, they are thinking their therapy is best. 
So it's very <laughs> difficult to compare. But some academicians try to figure out that there, is there any common part in the therapy? And someone says 30 or 40 percent might be common. So not different among the different psychotherapies. And 60 or 40, someone says. So there are common things, but it's very difficult to choose which is the best. And my feeling about the choice is, it's, or well, if the therapy sound, uh, feels natural to you, that is your therapy. But some therapy, I don't feel natural. For example, I used to learn psychoanalysis uh, a little bit, but I don't want to analyze them deep in the past. <laughs> and what was wrong with them, I don't want to do that. Well, but, I mean, this isn't the question, but like I made a presentation, as you remember, about Jung. Yeah. So, I, so, so I just think it's, I think with psychoanalysis, what's very crucial is that it's always an intellectual interpretation. Yeah. That's the requisite for understanding the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Freud makes a lot of yeah. issues about this. So, any psychoanalytic, it's about analysis fundamentally. Yeah. Whereas what you're describing is before analysis. I mean, that's what this is my question actually. This is my lead into my question. Can this method? work in conjunction with a psychoanalytic theory? Because it's a method fundamentally. Maybe this method is the best for dealing with the problem. Well, it might be possible if that psychoanalyst knows this therapy, then they can talk about that you know, okay. Yeah, behind the mirrors or something. You have to add another category in that 200 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just had one yeah. question. So was there no uh, style of therapy that started with the letter Z? What? Was there anything that started with the letter Z? Z, so, well, I talk about that, and so, someone said, so, someone, my, my colleague said, well, there's a Zen therapy. Zen therapy there, or Zen, Zen. 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 Let's go play Zelda. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, then I want to add in one thing. So how I what I said as most consistent therapy is so suppose you are learning the active listening and you learn from the expert of active listening. The possibility, chances are the lecture said something like your own way of listening style is not good enough. You have to learn this. So from the beginning, they well, deny your past experience. But solution for this approach, when I first attended her, the East Kimberley's workshop, she was started by asking a question to us. The question is, what do you want? So what kind of experience do you need to see so that you can say coming here was a good choice? Asking question and <laughs> listing the, 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 our request and try to close the delete by doing some exercises. So that is completely the same as the, to the client, what they do to the client. No, she's been a great friend of mine for a long time. I was just curious because I'm so, is there any time where a patient or a client will want something that is actually worse for them? Can, can a client actually want something that would put them in a worse position than if they wanted something else? Can they want something bad? They think it's something good for them, but they actually want something that would make their life worse. So, that person himself or herself? Something bad. Then. Or just like a suicide or something like that. Well, I don't know that maybe they want to take a certain drug to help them. Well, that drug causes first of all, we, we want to know better. But by doing so, something worse will give you some, well, it will be helpful. Why is that is helpful? We don't deny that is not good. We, someone wants something we couldn't understand. You have to be very careful. And the, there must be a big, good reason to say that. So the, what is a good reason to say that? And some was the clients didn't know well about how to deal with the problems. And well, for giving up everything and say something like that. We have to deal with their, what they have experienced so far. 
And why they think like that? There must be a good reason to do that. And trying to figure out, there might, is there any different direction to see that problem? So we try to cooperate with them.